I have been doing research in the Colombian Amazon since 1993. And so I have, I have uh, intimate familiarity with some indigenous Amazonian groups. I was also till a month ago, till the end of June of 2020, the president of a learned society, SALSA, the Society for the Anthropology of Lowland South America. And we were very concerned back in March with being properly responsive to what was clearly a pandemic, COVID. It happens that in Amazonia, and especially with indigenous people, people who get infected die at about twice the rate of the national averages. We were quite fearful of the brutal impact of a pandemic like this one. Uh, the history of pandemics in the Amazon is 500 years old. Back in the 1500s, about 90% of the people died from pandemics. Right? Um, interestingly, some indigenous peoples today are opting to resolve the issue kind of like they've been doing it over 500 years. It's they pack up their stuff and head off for remote places. Um, as an anthropologist, as an expert on these topics, we know about kinship, river travel, local indigenous organizations, relations between indigenous peoples and the states. And so we can say things about this. We are, for instance, collectively as anthropologists of the Amazon, very worried about the right wing government in Brazil pulling back on the recognition of indigenous territories. Uh, they stopped protecting indigenous territories from the invasions of illegal miners and illegal loggers. And those people are bringing COVID in. That kind of, of insight comes from me and my colleagues, anthropologists who have spent years in the region, becoming very familiar with how things work on the ground. So that is how my work is connected with the, the current crisis. <laughs> In sort of in a big picture, I imagine that for a few decades, the threat of pandemic will be an important memory that motivates political action, motivates some state preparation in the form of investments in, in public health. I would love to see a defusing and depolarizing of cultural debates in North America and Europe regarding identity politics, race, and economic systems. And with the depolarizing, I would like to see more robust discussions with specifically more anthropological input. I do think anthropology is a very important discipline with lots to contribute. Um, I would also like to see greater global and local state commitment to the protection of indigenous territories. And in part, and again, after a robust discussion, this should involve more integral participation of indigenous peoples in political decision making. It is absolutely central and important. We need each other's insights. We need each other's criticisms. This makes us more rigorous. It fosters our creativity. It is just vital to intellectual endeavors. And this transcends national boundaries, of course. If you want, there's, there's actually an indigenous Amazonian story to this effect. It's a very common philosophical point in indigenous societies that you cannot know yourself or improve on yourself on your own. You always need a conversation partner, somebody to point out to you aspects of yourself. This. There's a myth about that in, in, in the society I worked with that I could go into deeper, or I could suggest to you that you look it up in my article. I published an article in TBT called On Engaging with the Work of Peers, Open Access, uh, if you want to look at the indigenous story on the importance of engagement with each other.